When we speak about health, we first of all mean a certain state of the physical body. Here we speak of the physical body, not the consciousness. A state that is characterized by an absence of illness, meaning that health is the absence of illness. When nothing hurts and there is enough energy, then one can consider that the body is healthy. And it is actually truly so, because in our body, as well as in our mind that controls the body, there are natural self-regulating mechanisms that must be present and turn on at the moment when something begins to fail within our psychological system. And if anything goes wrong, this self-regulating system must quietly and unnoticeably perform all the necessary repair work, thus not letting its owner get distracted from more important tasks. This is how it usually happens in a healthy body, because the illness starts to manifest when the self-regulating system fails. It is as if it tells its higher authority, I'm kind of lacking the algorithms and instruments in order to deal with the illness. Maybe it's time that you give me some sort of advice. And how can it reach out to heaven? Only through pain, through the state of unfulfillment, through energy loss. According to this, we can make a simple conclusion that when the body starts to hurt, it means that the primary natural connection between the body and its owner, the consciousness, was broken. Why didn't the consciousness react in time? Why did it allow getting to the stage of illness, to the stage of physical pain? In theory, the consciousness and all embedded self-regulating systems should be constantly exchanging information in the background without affecting the mental body. Like a computer would be exchanging information with all of the peripheral equipment that it is connected to. It doesn't check in with the user each time whether it should connect to this or other device or if it should turn on the monitor or not. It has an automatic mechanism to turn on, to connect, and so it does. Why then isn't there such a natural interconnection in our body? Why is it constantly trying to attract our attention? It is because this embedded self-regulating system that is biologically present in every cell, in every organ, in all of the structures of the system, has failed for some reason. And our task in this course will be to restore the system or at least learn the method to do so. In other words, to become the repairman of this entire system in order to somehow revive its self-regulating function. It has to start working properly. Namely, it has to be awakened. It may be that the program fell into a sleep mode, maybe it has received the wrong information cluster that forced it to malfunction or not to function at full capacity, and so on. And you never know where, on what level, the problem that caused the physical ailment may lie. And we find out about it only when it can no longer be ignored. In other words, it's either that one experiences a great loss of energy and is feeling extremely drained, or there is real physical pain that cannot be ignored any longer. Such a certain medical test results could be ignored if one is not particularly anxious, thus saying, well, if there is no pain, then everything is fine, as we usually do with our teeth. Until they don't hurt, we do not go to the dentist. Well, it's the same with the body. The self-regulating system has to work in a way that we wouldn't need to pay attention to our body. The body must eat the kind of food that it must eat, it must sleep as much as it needs to during the time that it needs to do so, it must turn on all of the metabolic processes that are required from a physiological as well as genetic point of view, the way that it was meant from the conception. And all of this should happen automatically. When the owner of the body finds it necessary to add some biological or chemical elements in the form of medication or supplements, it means that something is happening within the body. What exactly is the key to solving the riddle? In order to determine what exactly is happening in the body, why it doesn't want to be healthy, we need to remember the sevenfold structure of the human consciousness 
and focus our attention upon its very interesting peculiarities. I will not draw with you remember it perfectly. We have seven subtle bodies, two of which, the first and the last one, the physical and the atomic body, possess chakra structure that simultaneously works for input and output. These chakras are nourished by the purest energy of Earth and the purest information of the Atman. The peculiarity of these two chakras is that they don't have any contact with the horizontal world, the world of people. Whereas the other five intermediate chakras possess a slightly different functional structure. They have an entrance, an input side and an exit, an output side. They don't work in any other way. These chakras communicate exclusively with the human world. And the human world is unfortunately a sort of big garbage dump. I apologize for the comparison, but basically one never knows what they will get from there. People who are living where there is clean air, in ecologically clean places, in the woods, and with no people around, as a rule have no clue about the illnesses that citizens and those who live where the population density is quite high suffer from. There was this case about five years ago when they discovered an old lady in the Krasnoyarsk province who lived in the forest for probably 60 years or so. And if she ever got out, it was to visit the nearest village at the most. Otherwise, it was the villagers who would come to visit and still she didn't interact with them for a long time. So it happened that one of the villagers stayed longer and she has been in contact with him longer than usual. Right after that, the old lady fell seriously ill, but with a virus that one's body would normally get over pretty fast, without any help or paying any particular attention to it. Whereas she developed an extremely severe pneumonia that ended fatally. They didn't manage to save the old lady. And all of this because she lived in such a pristine environment that her immunity was not conditioned against those common viruses that massively surround us. And the body doesn't even pay attention to them because the natural defense is already in place. Therefore, life in such a high density, such a cloaca, is on one hand quite positive as it increases your immunity, but on the other hand, it can clearly have negative consequences on our body. Because the energetic and informational flow that come from the horizontal human world can be so strong, so dense, that the body is simply unable to react on time. It should be reacting on time, but sometimes it doesn't. This happens when the information exchange between the bodies is interrupted. Let's say the mental body is late processing all of the emotions that entered the astral body, or the astral body is late to react emotionally to the changes in the etheric body. Doesn't make it on time. And then the problem takes over. And this would really become a problem and for those who simply live in this world and don't do anything to expand their consciousness and don't do any meditation, it really is a problem. Big city illnesses become more and more sophisticated. Antibiotics don't help and if they do, it's only the brand new ones, those that the contagions haven't adapted to yet. But we have a method that we will try out, this technique, this practice that we will now get to know. Since it is inevitable that the five horizontal chakras stay in contact with the human world and work horizontally, we will remind ourselves of one existential peculiarity of humans. Namely, that their subtle layers, their subtle bodies, are not randomly organized because each of these subtle bodies is the permanent residence of the one or the other element. They just mutate a little within the human consciousness. But if we learn to intake the element's energy through our chakra system, especially through the five intermediate chakras, so from the second to the sixth, instead of the energy of humans, then we would greatly safeguard ourselves from all the natural contagions that can be found in an environment where we are closely communicating with people.
Because as a rule, people, especially those living in big cities, have a quite disfigured energetic structure. Their first chakra is practically closed. The last one is closed for sure. There is no need to even ask a psychic. They all have their little hats, like Jews with their yamakas. Most of the first chakras are plugged. And this is a sign of the inability of the consciousness to receive Earth's energy. It just cannot do so anymore. It may wish to do so, but the cap is closed. And the only way left to survive is to suck energy from the human world like a vampire, with all of the disadvantages that such vampirism would bring, in the form of viruses, psychological as well as energetic, that are present here. Therefore, our mission here will be to adopt a methodology by which the chakral structure is nourished not by human energy, not by the energy from the etheric or astral or mental or causal realms, but precisely by the energy from the forces of the elements. Awakened the initial primary human structure, the one that the human was born with, the one he was programmed with, designed, and he was designed with a calculation that vibrationally his chakral structure will be tuned to the elemental forces. And in their purest state, the chakras do work within the frequency range of one or the other element. But as the consciousness mutates, adapting itself to the surrounding environment, imitating it, its frequency range begins to steadily narrow down. And when the chakra has mutated to a narrower range, it is no longer able to receive the element's energy to the fullest. And it is for to receive this energy only fragmentary. And fragmentary energy means that it must be taken from the human world exclusively. If a chakra is well functioning, if it manages to match the frequency range related to the element, then everything turns out and it starts to work at its full capacity. A chakra working at its full capacity starts to influence the self-regulating system automatically. It finds out what's wrong, the reason as to why the regulating system doesn't manage to process the entire energetic current given by one or the other element, and thus introduces appropriate corrections. And the nice thing about it is that it all happens without any additional attention from the owner of the body. The body owner just notices the effects that something within him has changed. I did this exercise and something changed. I didn't do the exercise and something changed as well. Therefore, the technique I will show you today will probably require daily training. But the nice thing is that it requires very little time. It is like a morning routine. If you are used to taking care of your body and you do at least a set of exercises in the morning, then building in this extra energetic practice that takes 10 minutes per day will not be a problem. But if laziness is your life's companion and you find it difficult to overcome it, then you will have to make an effort. It all depends on whether it is worth to you. If you want to be healthy, then you will do them. If you do want to, then you won't. And I also will tell you that the tenacious ones have sure enough obtained the desired results.